they adapted it like what are you just being toxic that you're saying that they didn't adapt this part huh. oh. Yo, what's up, Tiffin Nation? It's me, the Tiffin Monster here again, and we're back with another Honest Feelings and Review. So, I'm going to keep this brief. I didn't reread Volume 11.5. I, I felt at ease. I felt giving myself a rest, and that's what I did. I felt super lazy today, and that is why I didn't even upload a single video. And I know a preview will be coming up today as well which will be later when i wake up so yeah anyway i didn't reread everything and i didn't even reread a single thing <laughs> but i'm just gonna say this right now there are a lot of cut contents not this again that is to be expected because this episode there's only two episodes left to adapt and they're going to adapt this thick volume comparing this thickness to volume 9 look at that yeah this has 430 pages 430 pages worth of content <laughs> keep in mind not all the pages are like uh, fully filled up some pages has illustration and that is why it fills up the whole page and then when it comes to the adaptation they focused more on the Horikita siblings and that is what's important for me we do not care so yeah the title of the episode on control is change your desires rather than the order of the world the translations are way different some people actually complained oh they didn't adapt susan is monologue Solly lukoi i'm like uh i'm pretty sure they did are you not ashamed of yourself are you not embarrassed? This is really embarrassing. I think you guys need to reread that part because literally the title is a girl peering at herself in the mirror. I'm not lying when I said that. It's literally the title of the chapter. Um, where is that part, if you may ask? What is this part? What is this part then? <laughs> what is this part? <laughs> it's literally that. They adapted it. Like, what? Are you just being toxic? Are you just being toxic that they didn't, that you're saying that they didn't adapt this part? Huh. Ah. Dude, literally, it's it. Thank you, my false yet unmistakably real self. I bowed to the mirror and my reflection in it, my long hair swayed. Then I brought my head back up and looked away from the mirror. I was done facing my past self. There was no more time for that. I had something I had to do as myself. It was something I'd noticed right at, at the very last moment. A final gift for my brother so that he could leave in peace. Are you kidding me? Are you are you saying that they needed to adapt that? <gasps> are you kidding me? It's It's in the book. It's in the book. They adapted this. Look, I'm a fake. A fake. See? Who in the world am I? That was right. The person reflected in the mirror was me, but it was not me. A fake. I'm a fake. What I want to show him, what I really wanted my brother to see was, is right there. It's right there. Are you blind? Daddy, chill. Jesus Christ. How long are you going to keep on so toxic that you're trashing the anime just for the sake of trashing it? Even though they adapted the monologue. Are you fucking insane? Are you fucking crazy? To the point that you're actually trashing the anime. That's something that they did. That's just something that I cannot bypass and let it slide. I won't. Because you're just being toxic for saying, oh, they didn't adapt the monologue. When in fact they did. In this, I specifically said it in my preview reaction video for episode 12. Yeah, well, anyway, uh, just people dragging on the hate, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's mostly a recap of what happened, and then the graduation, and then I'm glad they adapted this, this one. Not the literal illustration, but the scene. 
It's Chawashira Sensei with Mashima Sensei, Saka and Nagi, and Ayano Koji in the room talking about Tsukishiro. That is hinting their next cooperation, which will be season 4 slash year 2 season 1. If they ever do it, I'm pretty sure they will because they're hinting a lot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this one. Uh, I really, I think I do remember that Manabu did make a speech, but I don't remember the exact words however they skipped a lot and this is one of them yeah yeah <laughs> they skipped the uh manabu and nagumo handshake i think studio lurch just wants anime only to see nagumo is a scumbag he's an asshole <laughs> doesn't deserve the respect and handshake from not <laughs> from manabu <laughs> Yeah, this part is super, 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 super rushed. They didn't even try. They didn't even try to adapt everything from Ryuwen's perspective. They didn't adapt it, but I've already mentioned it in my volume 11 honest feeling slash review, so you can go check that out. But yeah, put it simply, Ryuwen played dirty and he... That's why when Susan said this, I hear a lot of students suddenly called out sick. Uh, well, I already mentioned it. Ryuen played dirty and he put laxatives on the class B students and cla uh, class D students were following or stalking class B. So that is why it's it's a hint of Ryuen, the tyrant's return. Yeah. But the anime didn't do that. They they instead gave us a hint where Ayana Koji was talking to Ryu and what are you going to do next? Don't know. <laughs> that part, they only hinted Ryuin's return on that one, but they didn't hint the return of his schemes, you know. But I get what the anime is doing because of the restrictions and the limitations of the episodes and the runtime. They only had to adapt what's important for Ayana Koji the most and Sakenagi because they these two are the most important for this uh, for this season. And then for the finale part, it's Suzune. Suzune's growth is important, especially that her character is now developing and then will proceed to year two, which now will be one of the greatest character developments ever made by Kinugasa Sensei. If not the greatest character development of all time. So, oh uh, yeah. They didn't do words. They instead do visual storytelling here. Mashima Sensei shaking his head. Tichinose and saying, yeah, that's enough. But in the light novel in volume 11, Mashima Sensei just straight out uh, declared that Ryu win win. Yeah, Ryuin wins that one, and then as a whole, so yeah. In total, Ryuin won five events, while Ichinose won only two events. Which means Ryuin got the most points, and yeah, since he won five events, he got an extra point for their class. And that is why Class C, which is now Class D again, Ayana Koji and Susanna's class, are now back to the bottom. Because Ryuwen gained so much points from this exam alone. By the way, if you're wondering, why did Ryuwen suddenly freaking uh, volunteered to be the the leader? Oh, yeah, you can see this. 2 class B, 3 class D. And then game 6, it's now class D. And so game 7 is a given that it's going to be for class D. That's basically the scene. Uh, sorry about the dog. Ugh. They did show more in the light novel. Or more like in text. You know. The, the way they describe it. Is that Ryuin and Ichinose's battle. They didn't adapt Hiyori. Being the uh, the instigator. To bring Ryuin back to being a leader. And then the interactions with Ibuki and Ishizaki. With Shina Hiyori. And then Ryuin coming to the karaoke, yeah, they talked, and yada, yada, yada. And at the same time, Ishizaki um, asking for Ryuin's help. So, yeah. Ryuin was the one that um, told Ishizaki that uh, if you want the highest chances of winning, you'll have to challenge Class B. 
and that's what that's what they did so yeah that's basically in volume 11 so it's not in 11.5 but anyway anyway uh they adapt this fairly well i don't know if it's all adapted in the novel you know but uh yeah i i think they pretty much gave out what is intended in this scene susan and her class wants to be independent now without anybody's help but their own and then this scene i think i mean we all know it's way more prolonged in the light novel by the way i love the shot of anna koji with the water you know the reflection sheesh i just love the visuals man although some visuals are eh. <laughs> nah. and then yeah by the way this is like i said uh transmitted to uh outsourcing to studio shaft so yeah i i was so shocked by the scene look at this whoa <laughs> they didn't need to do that much of animation for ayana koji walking i was so shocked by that i was like what <laughs> this is outsourced to studio shaft <laughs> but they dedicated so much in that freaking walking scene of ayana koji <laughs> what i didn't even see any bad visuals even the lighting looks good yeah studio shaft did a pretty good job and they didn't adapt this um pretty much in the light novel from what i remember they talked instead of just like oh yeah i'm gonna explain things so let's put ost they did that for the runtime and i do get that like it's so hard man it's so hard to adapt everything into one you have to admit the runtime as well that you are you're given this allotted time only and so you have to use that very carefully and that's the creative entertainment industry so i'm wondering if people actually get it though but i'm pretty sure they don't still they're still close-minded into saying oh i want a perfect adaptation sure let's get up to 20 seasons of clash with the elite <laughs> it's bound to happen that many things will get cut out but i gotta admit this episode was very well paced in the anime they didn't explain it in this scene um but yeah i think anime only get it that they're talking about skishiro and his involvement with his interference with their battle and yeah but in the light novel, I think from what I remember, Mashima Sensei was shocked that Ayana Koji was supposed to win that fight, not Sakayanagi and their class. And then this one right here, see this? There's no guarantee they won't send another assassin after him. <laughs> not just one, but many assassins. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the most um, notable one would be I'm not gonna say <laughs> anyway yeah I it's pretty much a guarantee now that they're doing year two they're hinting so much already even though they did cut out this part but I don't know if they will move it though uh, this part right here this is a very crucial moment for year two by the way this is Susan challenging Ayana Koji. You lost. We lost the fight between uh between us and Sake and Agi. Class A. Is it true that you're not hiding your skills? You know, like it's Susan being like that again. <laughs> I'm a challenge you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that's basically what happened. And Ayana Koji did say that I'm gonna let you choose the subject in before the exam begins. Or like I think, yeah, before the exam begins, I will make you the deciding factor on what subject you'll choose. Whoever scores the highest will win this bet or this challenge. Got the highest score in that certain subject that she'll choose in the same day of the exam. Because so that Ayana Koji isn't prepared, he won't have the time to actually review stuff. It's Ayana Koji as well. Ayana Koji was the one who proposed that. Oh yeah, I'm gonna let you choose on the same day of the exam so that i won't get prepared for the exam itself for that certain subject alone yeah that's how confident anna koji is <laughs> yeah that's why that's the that's an important scene that they should never cut and i hope it's only moved yeah that's basically what happened in that scene uh anna koji didn't look at susan while they were talking or susan was making a challenge a bet so yeah that's their challenge together in year two 
volume one so it's in the first arc of flash from the elite year two yeah other than that i think um they moved scenes as well i don't know if they're gonna adapt the hirata part where hirata asks for ayana koji to can i call you kiyotaka <laughs> this one people were saying it's good speaking of being a hiyori simp Let's talk about the uh, the the poll voting of the girls in Classroom of the Elite. There's a thing going on in Classroom of the Elite. Uh, whoever wins or has the highest vote in the girls, you know, K. So the 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 characters that you uh, that are in there, you know, the choices of, of the girls there are K. Kurizawa, Sakenagi, or Arisa Sakenagi, Honami Ichinose, Shina Hiyori. Susan Horikita and then Kikyo Kushida. So, yeah, six, a total of six. And boy, the fans are crazy voting for many accounts just for their girl to win. And it's sad. That just goes to show you how toxic this fandom is. As a part of the fandom, I am dishonored. I'm not honored by this state of Classroom of the Elite's fandom right now. Like, if you want to jump into this hellhole, go. <laughs> but I'm not even causing any ruckus. So like, I I just let them be. You know, just, do, just create fire. Add more fuel to the fire. Add more oil into it. Yeah, go. Make the world burn in the Classroom of the Elite world. Yeah, while the author himself is sick. There's a lot of cut contents, but I'm not going to mention them. Just go watch videos about the cut contents, but um, yeah. Anyway, what matters is what I actually feel about this episode. Yeah, and as you can see, it's focused on Suzune mostly. The most, and Manabu. They're, yeah, like, as you can see, the, uh, the visuals, they're... Like there's no there's nothing that I actually saw that are bad so yeah great job Studio Shaft <laughs> yeah, that's the monologue that people ignored that was like oh they they didn't adapt the monologue oh my god <laughs> it's so dumb are you blind are you blind that you didn't even see this freaking scene huh are you blind are you blind <laughs> don't be an idiot changed my life i'm so offended by that like it just goes to show you how toxic that fan is i'm not gonna name drop him or her <laughs> it's so dumb <laughs> they adapted that but he's saying that they didn't adapt it huh huh it's so dumb it's so stupid what an idiot <laughs> <laughs> So my complaint on this scene, my complaint on this scene is that, um, so if you're going to wonder where are the other scenes as well like this, I'm pretty sure they moved it. They moved this scene because they needed to focus on the Horikita siblings because the comprehension and the attention span of the people that are watching the anime would get lost uh, they would be like oh yeah that happened yeah because they ha we have to wait for a week that's why they mostly focused on susan and manabu so and that's what i'm glad about so uh, it's okay if they move scenes but uh, um i know that they are going to cut out scenes because you know it's 430 pages worth of content so it's bound to happen man <laughs> So my complaint here is that Manabu actually, you know, they adapted the scene well. But what they didn't adapt is that Ayana Koji's, uh, what's going through Ayana Koji's head. Ayana Koji in his inner thoughts, he's saying how much he respects Manabu so much. He's thinking about other scenarios where, uh, what if Manabu was a classmate of mine, you know, like he's thinking of those things. Because that just shows how much he respects Manabu. I think the anime did it okay, you know, showing Ayana Koji respects Manabu because they shook hands. But other than that, yeah, they only talk. They show the Ayana Koji just monotone face. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's usual Ayana Koji, you know what I'm saying? So this is the parallel I'm talking about from season one, episode one with Ayana Koji and Suzune. 
So yeah, this is these parallels and visuals aren't going to be in the novel. So the visual storytelling is the the advantage that you'll get from the anime. So yeah. This actually means a lot. Horikita Manabu, Horikita is now leaving. While Ayana Koji is still there. But as you can see the lighting there, shadow, like yeah. As you can see, like he's still trapped in that school. While Manbu is now set free. And then from season one, as you can see from that from this same parallel visual, you can see Ayana Koji standing there about to enter this prison, <laughs> this school. And Suzune was there standing as well. But like on top, so they're about to enter so yeah as you can see that's the parallel that's the visual storytelling and that's the power of adaptations that cannot be conveyed in the novels because it's only words that you cannot even see the visuals <laughs> the world is full of things that can help you grow no matter where you look there are hints you can find all over which will help you improve yourself i suppose that's just what i was doing by engaging with Hurikita's brother right now like this by leading a quiet life here at this school while keeping my head down, I supposed I certainly would still leave something behind. My memory. Just a random memory that I could think of as fun. At first, I was satisfied with that. That's exactly why I had been living my life here as quietly as possible for the past year. But maybe that wasn't the answer. Coming to this school itself also has meaning. That's right. Sorry, I got strangely preachy there at the very end apologies said Hurikita Manabu not at all actually as your call I, I think those might have been the best words I could have heard from my senpai <laughs> because Manabu said the memories uh, Manabu did say the memories and it's shown and Manabu did say it in the anime as well so yeah that's why Anakoji did say not at all actually as your call I think those might have been the best words I could have heard from my senpai and then his inner thoughts here I'm going to feel kind of lonely once you leave. I thought about saying that, but stopped myself. That just shows you how how much level of respect he has for Manabu. It seems like we've shown each in, hmm, it seems like we've each shown each other a side of ourselves that is rather unlike us. <laughs> Manabu said, "There were things we could discuss with one another precisely because we knew the distance between us, and also there were things we could." understand precisely because we didn't put much we didn't put them into words it just shows you that the light novel is basically telling you Anna Koji's mind you know what he thinks during the scene so yeah it's not just about him talking and with his face like that so yeah Nissan there you go that's the scene and then yeah they made Susan look so adorable <laughs> She looks so cute with that short hair. I really do prefer Susan in this style. And then the medium length as well. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I like her growth so much throughout year two. She has been the best character developed in year two. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, they changed the scene here. Ayana Koji was supposed to be just there. But instead, what did Ayana Koji do? I'ma leave these two siblings to show my respect. I think for this moment, Ayano Koji was like, yeah, I'm gonna leave these two alone and have their moment because I'm not a part of their family. So yeah, let's have their moment because this is their first time talking to each other heart to heart. That's what the anime did. That's the change. And at the same time, what else did they change? This. Susan cried. The light novel didn't do that. They made Suzune look like <gasps> my brother's hugging me. <gasps> Simp. Yeah, that's what the light novel's illustration and moment did. And I did get what the light novel was trying to do. She was holding her emotions in. And then Ayano Koji was the one that told her to let it out and cry. Now that her brother is gone. So, yeah. And that's the change the anime did. 
Sorry, this has been a long video. I just realized. Lobao. That's why. See? Susan cried. I think, to me, I prefer this one. This is a mix, honestly. People were preferring the light novel. And I and some people prefer this. And I do prefer this one as well. So this is a mix of both. Why do I prefer this, if you may ask? Simple reason. Susanne finally showed a side of her, emotional side of her, to Mandibu straight up. Instead of holding it in and showing her that she is strong, I think it's great that they uh, let Susanne show that she cried and she is emotional that now her brother is departing. I think it just shows that they're now open, way more open to each other, you know. And I think that it's just a lovely moment for me because I feel like it's not a simp way. But some people still do see it that way that, oh my god, typical anime stuff, oh Nichan. Disgusting! Anyway, that's what I felt when I read the novel, by the way. But when I saw the anime, okay, it didn't feel like that. <laughs> it's so heartwarming. Uh, I do, I do still think the light novel is heartwarming, but like, they executed that one to be like a simp in a way. But for the the anime, they showed it way better because she cried in front of Manabu instead of holding it in. It's like she's still not open. No, she's still not opening up to Monobu that much. So, and I I don't know if they're still gonna do this part. But if they aren't, then that just means they ended in page three hundred twenty three up to four hundred thirty pages. So I'm pretty sure they'll move scenes because there's a lot more scenes because they're only gonna adapt a hundred more pages and now that we're done with volume eleven point five, huh? <laughs> yeah, I think it's beautiful that they did it like this they changed it instead of ayana koji uh seeing suzune emotional than her brother so you get what i'm saying i don't know man cancel me only one <laughs> and then they played cast room and okay hold on hold on hold on hold on, hold on, hold on. this is the scene or the parallel that one see this right here hold on yeah that one <laughs> that that scene yeah now you get my point okay cast room zach the artist of the song has admitted the fact that she already admitted this before cast room wasn't meant for anna koji it was meant for suzanne's growth as a character and i think it's a beautiful song for suzanne that's why they played it at the end of this episode so it feels like it's the end of the season but it's not so i'm wondering what they'll play in the final episode but yeah anyway that's why they showed most of susan is seen scenes throughout season one and all the way through season three i mean great job studio lurch for this episode even though it's not the best adaptation still they did a pretty pretty good job adapting what's important for this episode and that is the hurikita siblings moment together mainly focus on that one and i think they did it beautifully gotta give props to that so what is my rating for this episode i will give this episode uh episode 12 of season 3 of clash with the elite a an 8.5 out of 10 yeah it's not perfect because they skipped out a lot i mean that is to be expected but if you take a look at the anime perspective i think they did pretty good yeah, they mostly showed what's important, and that is the Horikita siblings. They did that so well. So yeah, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I hope I can trim this down. It's already 40 minutes, so I said that I will keep this short. Sorry, I don't think I'll edit this as much, but we'll see. Because I'm extremely exhausted because it's Holy Week, and at the same time, this is my only break that I'll get, even though I have homeworks to do as well during holy week this which sucks anyway yeah <laughs> thank you so much for watching i'll catch you guys on the preview but i'm pretty sure i'll upload the preview first before this one yeah <laughs> anyway i'll see you guys then see you on the finale of season three which by the way is this scene yeah yeah this is the final scene and then they will also adapt the most important part as well, Matsushita's involvement, 
overhearing Tsukishiro and Ayana Koji's talk and then Matsushita overhearing it. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you guys on the finale and then the AMV. You can watch my AMV already on over on my Patreon, but... Yeah, there will be changes in my AMV through YouTube. So the first version is already uploaded on, over on my Patreon. And then, yeah, the two rough cuts on my AMV is already uploaded there as well. Yeah, and then my AMV, the finale, the final cut, will be uploaded right after the finale of the anime. So, yeah. Everybody, thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you guys on the finale of season three of Flash Daily. Hopefully, there's a season four slash year two one uh year two season one. As much as you hate the anime adaptations, you gotta admit this is how we got into the series of Clash with Elite. <laughs> anyway, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.